today. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Abdurashid Yaku uh, of the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences. And he is also, he taught me about four months a year, distinguished professor and dean of the School of Minority Languages and Literatures of Central University of Nationalities, Beijing. And he is a internationally renowned expert in uh, old Turkic and in particular old Uyghur texts. He has published a number of editions of Buddhist texts primarily uh, from the Turfan group, uh, which is a spectacular uh, research group at the Berlin Brandenburg Academy. And he also has, uh, to my knowledge, one of maybe two grammars of uh, Old Uyghur in English. So that came out in 2005 with Harasovitz and uh, is working on a number of other projects, including uh, the place of printing in Old Uyghur culture. So uh, please join me in welcoming Professor Abdur Shadia. Uh, first of all, I have to uh, thank to Paul and the colleagues here uh, for giving me this uh, very precious opportunity to be uh, at the University of Iowa. Um, I try to come uh, to to uh, U.S. to study and to take part in conferences and so on since 1987, and I. Booked my planes and uh, uh, got uh, a lot of uh, invitations and and did everything, but I was not come until now. This is my first trip to to U.S. and it's the, uh, Iowa. I'm so proud of it and and I think the one kind of uh, guys in German ghost uh, is uh, what you say supporting me. Uh, this time, and it's realized. I am uh, very happy to be here. I think um, the last evening and the, uh, this, uh, this morning from the breakfast on, it became clear that I came to the right place. Uh, that's why, that was the reason uh, why I was not able to come uh, to, to U.S. And I should come to, I just waited for the invitation from Iowa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I become a little bit nervous. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm talking uh, in this way uh, for the first time. Uh, I think I should get right off to, to this place, and you can see me better. Other hand, I've just, um, yes, <laughs> uh, I will not be seeable. I try to um, talk on the aspects of all Uyghur, old Uyghur printed texts and corpus uh, technique and dating and sponsors of texts and places of printing. Please uh, do not, uh, what you say, uh, care about much if uh, there are any uh, mistakes and so on because uh, I just wanted to put most important, uh, what you say, information there. And if I publish them, I publish the paper, I will uh, check it very carefully again. And I did a very stupid thing. I, in order to, uh, to save some paper, it was very precious for old Uyghurs. Uh, now uh, I, try, I tried to save some paper and I, I did not print out. Uh, my, my paper, so I had to look at two computers at the same time. I didn't realize it before. And printed texts in, uh, in old Uyghur, you know, as you see here, uh, we have approximately uh, the texts a little more than 1,500 uh, printed texts in old Uyghur, and they are kept uh, at very different places, you know, in China and especially in Beijing and, and alphabetically, uh, uh, what do you say, listed. So it's not uh, 
the places uh, or to according to the importance or, or, or uh, and, and, and others and Don Huang and you know the Lucian perhaps you know uh, where Lucian is Lucian is in uh, so north uh, eastern part of China and Japanese uh, Otani collection collected a lot of texts and brought it uh, to Lucian and they left there uh, that's why we have uh, old Uyghur texts there and Turfan you it's uh, you know it's a very famous place where actually the most uh, Buddhist texts is produced um, and Urumqi the capital of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region and France and mainly at Musée Gemi and the National Bibliothèque, I think. The, in Germany, actually at the Academy of Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Sciences and the uh, Museum for uh, Asian Art. And in Great Britain, we have um, the Texas at British Library in London. And in Japan, we have Texas in Kyoto and Nara, actually in some private, uh, uh, what do you say, private hands or private collections in Russia, mainly at St. Pet Petersburg and private hands. Why I, I, I say private hands? Because some texts, for example, the fragments of the Baisha Jaguru Sutra uh, was discovered uh, seven years ago uh, uh, at a family of a Uyghur, uh, what a peasant, and he didn't know what it is, and just showed to a scholar, and 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 he didn't know what it is, and brought to Berlin, and we recognized immediately it's so easy now. If you can write uh, read one one line, you can just put it, and the electronic uh, version of Sibeta, you can immediately know uh, where it was translated. So we immediately identified it as the. Uh, translation of uh, the Baisha Jaguru Sutra and such kind of texts we still have a lot and that's the um, main situation of the uh, old Uyghur prints and before I start uh, my talk I would like to give some uh, information on the publications on the uh, blog prints the most important um, publications on block prints, I think, the, the paper published by um, uh, Peter Siemer. Uh, it doesn't function. Yeah, yes, that one. this one. Thank you. Oh, no. No, it's. Uh, it, yeah. This is back and forward, and this is the. the oh, yes, now the, it came back. That's the, that's the button that. for the light. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, green is better. Yes. And Peter Simmer's paper, Bemerkungen zur Datierung, Notice to, to the Dating of Uyghur Black Prints. It was published in Journal Asiatic. Uh, it's the most important, one of the most important papers. It's very old, but still um, uh, valuable. I think um, Melissa has distributed, I put the, the copy of it uh, on the home page. Uh, in drop-in box. Uh, Peter Sima published a book on the religion and the society in Uyghur uh, Kingdom uh, in Kocho. And it's, it, it's about the colophones and the, what you say, uh, donors of all Turkic Buddhist texts uh, uh, from Central Asia. And it's uh, a very important work on the uh, what do you say, the block prints, because it talks about the uh, donors and who supported this, uh, this printing of uh, old Uyghur texts, printed texts, and uh, the background and religious background and connection and content and so on. Very precise um, analysis. Um, it's still very useful, I think. To which direction? I should not. Yes. Then uh, we have this publication. It was done uh, together with uh, Hiroshi Umemura and uh, Masahiro Shogaito. Please notice that uh, I gave uh, Shogaito O with a short one uh, here because he uh, published things in two ways of spellings. If you write with a long um, uh, O, it means it's a serious publication. 
if we put his name in short um, vowel, it means uh, it's uh, still uh, 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 still uh, to to be revised. That's why it's it's you know uh, in short. And Yutaka Yoshida and and myself. Uh, it was done in two thousand two. Uh, it's mainly uh, uh, was done on the basis of uh, microfilms, which was bought uh, by the Jap Japanese government, mainly the uh, Toyo Bunko uh, uh, from uh, Saint Petersburg, and brought to Kyoto University and Tokyo. And it's the first catalog of uh, the old old Turkic texts kept uh, at Saint, at Saint Petersburg. So it's um, uh, very valuable. And then we have uh, publications, um, two publications from Shijimbo and Yasun Ashuri from 2000. And it's mainly on the printing technique, movable uh, printing technique, they, they say, uh, of uh, Shisha or Tanguts and Uyghurs. And it's very interesting and very, um, what you say, uh, important publication as well. Then we have the discussion of the the, the problems, uh, the things uh, in this book by my teacher, uh, Masahiro Shogaito, still with small, uh, what is a short name, because he wasn't to revise it and publish it in a new version, but he passed away. And this is also a very important um, uh, publication. I will come back uh, to it later. Then we have so many, uh, three uh, catalogs published started published actually, uh, oh, sorry, published actually uh, 2007 and together with uh, Knüppel, um, it just helped with German. At that time I was not able to write very uh, nice German. And then uh, 2008 I published the second volume and the 2009, the third volume, uh, in three volumes. This is the complete description of uh, printed text uh, kept at the Berlin uh, Torfan collection. These are the main literature. And today I would like to talk, um, you know, there's um, three things. I, at the end I, I, I uh, realized that uh, it might be very uh, what do you say, uh, much uh, 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 for a talk uh, for one hour. So uh, first I would like to give an overall uh, introduction and description of corpus, mainly are based on the works and what do you say, the catalog published by the joint publication by Japanese colleagues and my three, uh, uh, my catalog uh, of three volumes. and. After that, I will discuss uh, uh, the dating and technique of all Uyghur printings, and I will mainly based um, on my on, on, uh, ongoing research on the dating of old Uyghur block prints, uh, which was carried out between 19, 2009 to 2011 in Berlin. And the, at the end, I would like to briefly mention of sponsors of the printed texts in old uh, Uyghur and places where the texts had been printed. And still I will uh, rely upon the colophons appearing at the end of some uh, blog prints. That's the, the main content of my talk. Uh, let's come back to the uh, first topic. Uh, actually the great majority, I say great majority, that's the Chinese expression, <laughs> the great majority are Buddhist texts. Uh, that's clear. And then we have calendars. You, know, you can see only two. Uh, uh, of uh, 1,500 uh, fragments, we have only two calendars. Uh, the others are Buddhist texts. Actually, we have the third category, which should be called uh, the, uh, what do you say, uh, the images or illustrations, uh, I do not um, intend to consider them as a separate um, category because they should, uh, 
originate originate from uh, Buddhist sutras or Buddhist texts as just as part of the text, or uh, for example, as part of the cover or so on. So they are not separately uh, printed. We, we, at least we do not have uh, such texts until now. So I, um, uh, what you say, put them uh, to the first um, category. And this is the calendar text which was um, shown uh, uh, actually on the screen before I started. Uh, that's the calendar uh, what we have, one, one piece of calendar. Um, uh, you know, it's done un completely in the same way as Chinese did uh, in late uh, uh, Yuan Dynasty, at the end of Yuan Dynasty and in the beginning of Ming Dynasty. They produced calendars in the same manner, and Uyghurs just uh, just uh, did it for in, in Uyghur language for Uyghurs. And you know, um, uh, this this is um, so. Um, first, I can show it here. This is a transcription of this page. What I have shown there. And you can see the qi, shu, uchinch. And this is the Chinese uh, way of expressing the, the time. And this is the Uyghur word for third. And then here the date. And that's the, what you say, uh, the star, or uh, what you say, all seconds, ordu. Ordu, that's the star. And that's the way of the, uh, making calendar in China. And they, they just copied it and translated it in, in this way. I don't think uh, it was done in a very comprehensive way and everybody understood them because many words are so artificial. Uh, they did it for translation purpose. It's not necessarily be understood by, by uh, what you say, every Uyghur uh, who actually used it. Um, I don't know um, uh, what was the uh, what kind of uh, uh, function uh, they had uh, mm -hmm. uh, at that time, and the majority of Buddhist texts, uh, you know, uh, I would say the tantric uh, tantric texts, at least five four hundred five uh, four hundred fifty fragments um, um, have been identified as uh, parts of a different. Uh, uh, Tantric texts uh, in Berlin. That's the distribution of texts in different collections. I will not um, go to go into detail here. This is the the, the list and table of uh, tantric texts we have. Uh, you know, this text Arya Aparamita Yurjanana Nama Mahayana Sutra. It's the uh, most popular text we have in what you say, uh, several, uh, 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 several copies, uh, uh, about 200 uh, copies uh, uh, in Berlin and in Torfan, and also in, in uh, London, and as well as in, uh, uh, in St. Petersburg. And it's the most popular uh, uh, text. And then we have the fragments of the Stata Patra Dharani, I will uh, come back to them uh, to, to some important texts uh, uh, next. And this is the general table. You can see what kind of tantric texts uh, have been translated and printed uh, during the Yuan time by Uyghurs. And this is the, uh, I think, uh, one of the most important uh, uh, texts, uh, the Stata Patra Dharani. And uh, you know, I don't know if you read this text and it's very boring. It's full of uh, dharanis, but because it's boring, uh, perhaps it had a very mysterious function uh, uh, to, to the uh, Uyghur Buddhists. And uh, this text was um, this. Fragments uh, of this text was um, uh, have been published by uh, Efika Müller in uh, in 1910, and then later by Malov, and at the end by um, Masahiro Shogaito. Recently, 
uh, Rona Tash and Klaus Röborn published the whole text again in a critical edition. It's a very important publication on the text. But uh, they uh, concluded that the text was translated uh, from Sanskrit without showing any evidence. Because uh, if you know uh, the whole literature, uh, we do not have um, uh, any translation, direct translation from Sanskrit into Uyghur, except uh, for one text, um, Upali Paripricana. Uh, sutra and uh, other texts are translations from Chinese or Tocharian or from t uh, Tibetan and so on and I don't understand why they came to the conclusion that it was uh, translated from Sanskrit and I uh, noticed that during the uh, in the process of cataloging of the uh, block prints I noticed that they omitted this this project uh, this uh, this piece of uh, pay, um, uh, printed text uh, in the edition, and which was actually crucial to identification of the uh, the origin source of uh, of translation, and it shows that this fragment only has the the what you say parallel in Chinese, but not in Sanskrit and not in Tibetan. Uh, the Tibetan version of the text was, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, published by Porcio, Thibaut Porcio, a, a Hungarian scholar, and I compare it with uh, his edition, and it doesn't exist in both versions, but only in the Chinese um, version. And uh, if you look at it, and the pagination is in Chinese, I gave it in big uh, capital letters, and uh, 30, and then, for example, there is a crucial, very crucial uh, uh, expression, al qutrluk su cheriklerde, all kinds of um, armies, all kinds of armies. This expression, the text, the begin uh, or the preceding uh, uh, content, exists actually in Sanskrit and Tibetan, but not this this expression. It's only in the Tibetan, the Chinese text, and then I. Uh, made the, this is a Chinese uh, my, my tentative English translation um, all kinds of army and troops from other and so on this is the expression what we can find only in the Chinese text you can see here yi qie jun bing zhe zhong it's the exact exact uh, parallel to the uh, to the Uyghur expression then I came to the conclusion that uh, this text actually was translated uh, from Chinese, and they should have consulted some, uh, what you say, fragments of the text in Sanskrit and Tibetan, because they did it for Arya Aparamitayur Jinana Nama Sutra. They had uh, three or all available uh, versions in other languages, and they then produced a translation. Uh, that's that was the way uh, that they did uh, the translation of. Uh, uh, the tantric text is into, mod, uh, into old Uyghur. And this is uh, the, the, the largest text, I, I mentioned it. And its um, newest edition was published, just published in this year by myself um, uh, in the, the Berliner Torfan Texte, and together with some other uh, tantric texts in, in Berlin and other collections. And then we have Ujnishai Vijaya Nama Dharani, all of them are Dharanis. Um, it's, it was published uh, first by uh, uh, Efika Müller, um, but he omitted an, uh, a lot of uh, what you say fragments, um, but it was described in my catalog in, in 2007 and the edition is still missing. Uh, somebody who are interested uh, to read such in, in reading such a boring text can can come back. I would have done in uh, two months, but I had really no interest and no. <laughs> 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 it was enough to work on the Arya Abhiramita Yurjinana Nama Sutra, and I encourage a young scholar who may uh, or somebody else who are interested in it. Uh, and I would like to show this piece of uh, text. You know, this is very important. Uh, uh, that's why I would like to show it. 
this is a, uh, uh, the printed text. You know, until here, until the third page, uh, it's the part of the Arya Aparamita Yurjanana Nama Sutra, then started the second text, Ujnisha uh, Vijaya Nama. So they prepared the, the woodblock of different texts at the same time and then printed down, printed down. And in one colophon we read, uh, they, uh, one person, uh, the name I cannot remember now, it's not important because it's not uh, to identify in any historical sources, uh, in Chinese or in, in Uyghur sources, and said, and he uh, asked um, uh, to a public, uh, printing house in, in Beijing to print uh, nine Buddhist texts uh, and, and distribute it in 1,000 examples, uh, copies. And I think uh, these two texts are in, this, in the list. Perhaps uh, that's the, the woodblock, um, uh, or, uh, what you say, uh, which was mentioned in, the, in that colophon. We have a lot of examples, um, what do you say, that of the same uh, type of text uh, in the Berlin Torfam collection. Then, um, besides the tantric text, we have the translations, uh, uh, printed versions of some important Mahayana sutras. Uh, you know, the Buddha, Buddha Vatamsaka Sutra and the Swarna Prabhasa Sutra, which was known under the Uyghur title Altan Yaruk Sudur, and Sandharma Pundarika Sutra, and so, so on. Uh, these are the, the, the most, uh, what you say, uh, popular uh, Buddhist Mahayana texts uh, among the Uyghurs, and they also have been printed. And this is the list, all uh, texts, and the, you know, if you look at it, and you will see where they, they are now, and the number of fragments, and the, the place where they edited, and the, this is the place where you find the descriptions uh, on them, and, and different catalogs or publications. And I would like to, it's, uh, uh, it takes a, a very long time uh, to, to talk on all texts uh, at this place. Uh, I just would like to introduce uh, the, the printed versions of the Buddha Tamsaka Sutra here. And it's interesting. And it was so popular among the Uyghurs uh, that uh, to, uh, to, to translate the text in very different uh, versions and print it down in, in, in different versions. And at least we have, um, uh, you know, of the text, we have um, at least these uh, four different uh, versions. First, uh, if I stay here, I, you can hear uh, me clearly, but I cannot see this. I, I just need to see the, this screen, uh, but I cannot point it out. Fragments with a Pustaka stream, which is uh, what decorated with a flower and the lotus, and first it was discovered by Kudara, Kogi Kudara. He said, he wrote so clearly that if somebody else um, uh, can find a, a fragment with a, uh, what do you say, uh, with a flower, uh, that's the lotus, um, as a, uh, what do you say, stronghold, please identify it as the uh, translation, old Uyghur translation of the Buddha Saka Sutra in 40 volumes. Then I, uh, during the, uh, in the, in the course of uh, cataloging the texts in the Berlin Torfan collection, I found that um, we do not have actually the, the, the uh, what you say, the printed version of uh, the Buddha Saka Sutra in 40 volumes in this manner and of this type. But the, the other Buddha Saka Sutra, namely the Buddha Saka Sutra in 80 volumes. So, um, so we found, uh, uh, I, I identified and published some, uh, uh, some uh, fragments of it. Now I am preparing the complete edition of all manuscript and printed uh, fragments of the Buddha Saka Sutra. That's the, the first one. I will show the, the, the fragments later. And the second one is fragments with a short Chinese title, 
is Hua, that's the blue uh, flower, and that's the short, uh, uh, it stands for Huai Enjin, and that's the Bodhavatam Sakasut flower, ornament sutra, that's the flower. And the third version is fragments with the old Uyghur title, Avatamsaka, that's the uh, Uyghur rendering of the Sanskrit word Avatamsaka. Uh, so, and then the last one is the fragments of the Samantha Bhadra Charya Pranita verses, Pranidana verses. Uh, it's the last chapter of the text, and it exists in, in the verse form in Uyghur. So uh, we have these four kinds, four types of uh, printed texts. This is the beautiful uh, fragment um, with the uh, the flower as a, as a, what you say the string hole, and unfortunately the uh, the 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 huge, uh, large part of the fragment is missing. Then that's the. That's the text with uh, the short uh, Chinese title, uh, with Hua and uh, Flower. And it starts, you know, uh, the Uyghur text starts from right to, um, uh, to, to left. It's read from this side to the, to the other side. If I tell it, uh, you will say, uh, okay, it's easy, I can find it immediately. But uh, recently, I, I, two, uh, two months ago, I read a paper uh, in a very uh, well-known uh, uh, periodical, uh, which was published by two Chinese scholars, two Chinese colleagues at my university, they didn't show it to me, and they read the text uh, from the left to the right. Uh, even uh, uh, the professor actually is teaching, has been teaching uh, this the same old Turkic philology. Uh, in the last 30 years, and it's the first text uh, what he pu has published. And he's reading from the uh, left to the right, and saying that he was not identify the text at all, it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, there is the, that's the third version what I have talked about. Um, you know, you see the Chinese, First uh, comes the, the title and the pagination in Uyghur, then here the under, under it, it's the Chinese pagination and uh, the same meaning. So here I think that's the second volume and the, the first and the 17. And that's the same uh, content. Pagination is in, in, uh, in both two languages. Then we have the text, uh, what I have mentioned. Uh, I just wanted to show a very small one. Uh, you know, this is the Avatamsaka. Avatamsaka, that's the, the, the title, and that's the pagination, Sekizinch and Aids. And we have a bigger, uh, some bigger fragments, but I wanted to show the smallest one, uh, just stimulate uh, you uh, to have impression that it, it, it's not the case in Torfan collection that you have always see the, uh, what you say, complete pages. Uh, actually, we are working on very fragmentary texts. And actually, we have such um, uh, other texts, uh, printed texts, uh, Mahayana texts, I mean. Uh, that's the one page of the, the famous uh, Swarna Prabhasa Satoma Sutra. And the screen, uh, screen hall is here. It's very beautiful. Perhaps it's uh, done in a very later period, a uh, very late period. And you know, if you, unfortunately, I did not take a photo of the St. Petersburg uh, manuscript, uh, which is the, the complete uh, version of the text. It's, it, it's done exactly in the same manner, with marginal lines like that, like the, uh, the printed text, and very, long time. Scholars consider, regarded that this St. Petersburg uh, version uh, manuscript is actually a block print. Actually, it's not the case. It's done um, in a very late period, 7th century, uh, in Gansu province, the manuscript. And because it takes a colophon, uh, you know, uh, it's clear. Perhaps it's done on the basis of, the, of this um, block printed version. 
uh, it was uh, available uh, for the Uyghurs. Perhaps not the uh, Uyghurs, uh, you know, as Uyghurs today, uh, but uh, to the Uyghurs, uh, which was called Yellow Uyghurs, uh, who are living in Gansu province, uh, who are still uh, Buddhists, uh, actually Lamaists. And in the third uh, group of Buddhist texts are um, uh, the Chinese Epigrapha. We have the famous uh, text uh, which is known under the title Sekuzyuk Mek Sudur. Um, uh, that's the translation of the Tian Di Baiyang Shen Zhou Jing, which was a very popular uh, Chinese text um, and was created during the, the Impress Imperial uh, uh, Wu Tian. And it's a, what you say, falsified text. It was, it's, uh, it's done by Chinese. You cannot find it in, in canon, Buddhist canon at all. And then we have uh, Father Textus Foding Shin Da Toloni. Then the Uyghur title is like that. And the, we have the Yuan Jing. And yes, and then we have uh, Yeti Ken Sudur. Uh, it, it, something is wrong here. Yeti Ken Sudur uh, should not be the uh, Yuan Jing. Uh, that's the wrong title. Yuan Jing is the, the last, first one. And Yeti Ken Sutur is actually the Qi Xing Jing. Qi Xing Jing. Yeah, yes. And the last one is the verse commentary to the Vajrakchedika Sutra by Fushi. It's also an apocryphal text. And you cannot find it in Buddhist canon in other languages. It's done by uh, Fushi. Uh, it, it's uh, included in the Taisho Tripitaka uh, under the title Fu Da Shi Song Jing Gang Jing. Fu Da Shi Song Jing Gang Jing. Um, you know, the Yeti Ken Sudur, it's, uh, it's important to, to make a small note uh, to it. Uh, it was mentioned by uh, Professor George Kara that uh, when I visited um, uh, Petersburg, I uh, came across a fragment which looks like the fragment of the uh, Yuan Jue Jing. And it was actually mentioned in a Buddhist uh, historical text that Uyghurs have translated it. But the text uh, which was uh, translated and printed by Uyghurs actually got lost. Uh, he uh, made, uh, makes that note in his, one of his publications, which, was, which appeared in a Russian uh, periodical in 1970s, I think. Uh, during the process of, in the course of cataloging uh, of the texts in, in St. Petersburg, I uh, uh, discovered that fragment which he considered lost. But it, I, I had still no time to publish it. So uh, we have it. Uh, that's the, the full uh, list of uh, the Chinese epigraphica. And if you are interested, and I, I leave the PowerPoint presentation here, you can look at it um, after that. And all informations, um, important informations are there. Uh, to make a little, uh, what do you say, to, to have some impression, I just wanted to show uh, one piece uh, of the uh, Yetigan Sutur, that's the Uyghur translation of the, uh, you know, the Qi Xing Jing. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's apocrypha. We have the full translation of the text, um, Qi Xing Jing. Yes, it's one kind of um, omen, uh, one kind of omen. So um, it says that if, some, if one, some, someone reads the text uh, 1,000 times, and uh, his life will be increased, and, and, and happen the things uh, which uh, uh, was told uh, Professor uh, um, in, in, in his lecture. And, and women will be born, uh, reborn as uh, a man, and, and so on. And, and uh, the people will be born in the Amitayus uh, paradise and, and so on. So it's, it must be a very important uh, text uh, during that time among the Uyghurs. So it's done completely in the same way as the Chinese text. And we have the Mongolian version of the text, and it's in the same, uh, same uh, what do you say, um, uh, same shape.
you know, uh, some scholars, uh, for example, the Oda Juten, who published the, uh, the re-edition or diplomatic edition of the Sekiz Yükmek Sodur, uh, claimed that the black printed versions of uh, apocryphic sutra, Sekiz Yükmek Yaruk, uh, has no value uh, because it's just the, the printed version of the manuscript. And, and just wanted, I, I just selected one piece of text here, um, and he said, yes, uh, the value is that to show that it was popular among the Uyghurs because it was po um, uh, because of that it was printed, but he didn't recognize its real value. I I compared it uh, with the uh, what you say the manuscript version. I found what you say. Uh, uh, divergences between the manuscript version and the printed version. And if you look at this, uh, for example, uh, here Ulukke Toru Toku Kalur, here we, we find Kalur is the aorist form, and here we still have the aorist here, and uh, here we still have the aorist. This is the, the printed version. Uh, but all things are given in an other form in the manuscript version. You know, uh, you cannot find any aorist here. That's completely the same passage, but the, the aorist disappears. And wording and using and of uh, what is endings are totally different. So I think the Altunya, uh, this text, Sekuzyuk Mekaruk Sutra, is the only text. Uh, what we have from the 8th century until the 14th century. Uh, so the manuscript fragments uh, originate uh, uh, from 8th century to the, what you say, the 14th century. Uh, from the 14th century, we have the printed versions as well. So, uh, you know, that from through this text, we can, uh, if we carefully un uh, investigate, we can uh, figure out some important um, uh, features of the Uyghur language, uh, what kind of diachronic changes it, it made. Uh, I think that the fragment I have shown here uh, clearly shows uh, uh, that uh, important diachronic uh, development, uh, what happened, uh, which was happened in the uh, uh, in Uyghur language in, uh, in the course of uh, 600 years. Uh, so I would like to stress that it has great value. But I, I do not want to uh, go into detail because it would be uh, what very complicated if you do not know the language. Uh, so <laughs> I just omit it here. And we have um, uh, some number of, very limited number of uh, non-Mahayana texts. Um, that's the list of all um, texts we have. Uh, Buddha Charita and Jataka collection and Vishwantara Jataka and, and so on. Uh, you know, why we have uh, a small number of texts? You know, the old Jataka texts uh, in old, old Uyghur or old Turkic actually uh, are from the early period of old Turkic Buddhism. Uh, you know, the, the uh, what you say, stories, and the uh, uh, Jatakas and, 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 and these kind of texts are uh, from the early period of Old Uyghur Buddhism. At the later period, they did not translate them. Uh, perhaps uh, they just printed some, uh, what you say, survived, uh, the, uh, what you say, stories or the, the novel stories uh, uh, in certain century or the 14th century. Again, so we, that's why we have very little uh, corpus of texts uh, of non-Mahayana uh, literature. You know, it's, uh, they are extremely interesting actually. Oh, sorry. Ah, what happened again? At the upper, upper side, you will see the illustration, and this is the story. That's the Vishwantara Jataka. It's written uh, it's uh, it's uh, what you say told in verse in old Turkic. You know, uh, if you see the punctuation here, uh, here actually the verse ends. You know, the four lines. That's the end of each line. They have two dots, 
at the end of the, uh, what you say, one verse, then we have four points and, and so on. So it was uh, done in a very careful way. And so um, with illustrations uh, on the upper side, unfortunately, we have a very small, um, uh, what you say, number of texts of this kind. Sometimes the illustrations uh, is rather clear, but the text uh, lost. So this is uh, one of the examples. So uh, all of them have been, uh, what you say, investigated in, uh, in a paper published by Peter Zimmer. Fortunately, it's in English. Uh, uh, Donors of all Uyghur printings. It was published in, in, a, in, in a, what you say, fast shrift um, to uh, Yuyama, uh, I think. Fast shrift. What do you say to fast shrift? Fast shrift. shrift. OK. <laughs> um, then we have large number of texts, you know, uh, alliterative uh, Buddhist verses. Uh, this is a large corpus of um, Uyghur uh, Buddhist texts. And for example, the versified versions of some Mahayana sutras. Uh, for example, uh, the fifth chapter of the Svarana Prabhasa Sutra. You cannot find this versified version in other, uh, what do you say, in, in Chinese, but it exists in old, old Turkic. And I think the old, we all Turks have um, done it, or uh, there is any Chinese text which, which has served as the basis for it. I don't know. We, we, we were not able to find the Chinese text yet. Uh, so we, uh, at the moment, we believe that it was done by Uyghurs. Then the, we have the versified version of the Amitai Yurtiyana Sutra, Wulian Shoujing. Uh, it's complete, rather complete. Um, and it's done uh, by, by Uyghurs as well. Uh, the versified version does not exist in Chinese. And uh, some parts of the Pusandharma Pudaryoka Sutra is also available in all, in, in, in all Uyghur in versified form. Uh, but it does not exist in, in Chinese as well. So Uyghurs, um, uh, what you say, became lovers of, 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 of poetic texts. Uh, you know, um, uh, at that period. Um, but I do not want to uh, go so far, but you know, at that time, the main literature in Central Asia was actually poetic works, but in the Islamic world. But it was, uh, it has this, this parallel in the Buddhist part of, uh, what do you say, Buddhist world of, of Turks, Buddhist part of uh, Turkic world. And we have, also, uh, the, the verse text is uh, translated from the original uh, verse text, is, uh, verse text is, uh, uh, which existed in, in other languages. For example, uh, the Ikavi uh, Imshata Stotra. It's actually the Tara Ikavi Imshata Stotra. It's, um, uh, what do you say, the poetic text, tantric text. It was translated into more, or, or an old Uyghur, also in verse form. And we have large number of colophons. Actually, are compositions by Uyghurs in verse form. This is the uh, the table of uh, the verse texts. Then we have um, father texts, woodblock prints. You know, we have uh, father texts, uh, printed texts uh, uh, of <laughs> other type. Uh, you know, this is um, one of the important uh, texts, um, though we only have this piece. Uh, I should show this terrible uh, uh, photo here. I asked the colleagues in, in Donghuang to send me a clear photo of the text, <laughs> and they sent me the same photo several times. <laughs> That's the, the, the best uh, image I, I have. Um, but it's really very important, you know. Uh, you, it it tells that the person who called Anzang uh, had actually uh, produced a poetry. Uh, you know, uh, you look at the, the number here. All together, one thousand two hundred eighty shlokas. So it's a very long text. 
Uh, it has a Chinese title and in the beginning of the text. And this is the, the introduction to the text. And after that, actually, it begins the text. We do not add the text, but it gives uh, what you say very important information that Anzang uh, uh, actually has uh, written down such a long work. He is a very famous academician, you know, um, uh, which wa who was very active uh, in, in Yuan court. He was uh, given the title of academician by the Yuan uh, rulers, and he has translated many texts into Chinese, also into Mongolian, also into Tibetan language. So he was a very famous person in, 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 uh, in the history of uh, Yuan dynasty. And this work uh, was printed also in, uh, 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 in all Turkic. Uh, but unfortunately, we only have this part. It was discovered in uh, in the mid in the mid uh, 19th, 1980s uh, by the Chinese archaeologists in Donghuang. Uh, this is a very uh, unique text. You know, uh, there is a Chinese title in the beginning. Then here, the same content is given first in Uyghur, then in Chinese. This kind of text we do not have. Uh, before that. And then, this is my, my translation of the text, you know, uh, four office uh, pavilion verse composed by Master uh, Anzang and An Pavilion and four. And that's the Chinese uh, title. I, I gave it in uh, capital. And so this verse is um, what you say uh, was, was, was printed in that manner. And that's the other type of uh, printing we have. Then uh, in, 19, in the beginning of 1980s, uh, this, the archaeologists in Torfan discovered this fragment. And this is uh, very unique. It's very small, but very unique, you know. The first comes the Uyghur text, then the Chinese uh, uh, text, Chinese parallel in the next, li as parallel, uh, in the next line. Then the Uyghur text, then the Chinese text, and the Chinese uh, Uyghur text, the Chinese parallel, and so on. And these kind of uh, printings we had, uh, we didn't have uh, uh, until the discovery of uh, this this fragment. So this is a Buddhist text. Um, you know, I just made the identification of it, and I will not uh, go into detail. It's very short, but it's possible to identify it, and. That means uh, they really produced bilingual Buddhist texts, both in Uyghur and Chinese, uh, in printed form, uh, and, and published them, or, or printed them. It's better. So these are the, the list of uh, the texts, what, what cannot be, uh, what you say, classified. Uh, to the, uh, what you say, the known categories I have mentioned. And we have uh, some commentaries as well. And for example, uh, we have the commentary Buddha uh, Charyavatara and Pratitya Samutrapada and, and so on. And I show only some photos. And here, it's not published, oh sorry. It's not published yet, but you know, here, the title, Pratitya Samutpada, then that's the, what you say, the Chinese title and the, uh, the page number. It must be a very long text, you know, uh, 231. And so uh, it must be a very long text, but on, we only have one piece of it. Then we have this uh, Buddhacharya. This is a, uh, what you say, uh, a other type of, um, uh, commentary, and you can see here uh, the pagination. It also existed in 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 a what you say in a as a very long text. This is the second uh, block of papers uh, uh, printings, and this is the uh, the second one of the second block. That means Uyghurs usually they paste six blocks together to make a roll, uh, what you say, a scroll uh, or a folded book. And this is the second um, folded book, uh, from the second folded book. 
So it must be a very long uh, folded book. Then we have such kind of uh, text. Text. It's in in, in Nara, um, uh, Tenri uh, Library in, in Nara, uh, with illustrations. It's actually Pratitya Samutpada uh, text with illustrations, and uh, it's very interesting. You look, uh, it's very long and uh, rather complete uh, text. Uh, I only show this uh, this page here. So. Um, that's the main corpus of uh, all Uyghur printed uh, texts. Now I come back uh, to the second point. I think it's, uh, yes, uh, almost one hour past. And dating and technique. Uh, actually, the number of datable old Uyghur block, uh, wood block prints is very limited. I use wood block prints. Actually, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether it really calls for all printings. Uh, we have the majority of texts, printed texts, as woodblock prints. And some scholars, I will mention uh, later, also claim that uh, Uyghurs actually had uh, woodblock prints, and as well as the, the, the printings, uh, which uh, was done by means of uh, movable uh, letters. And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the number of datable old Uyghur blood block prints or prints is very limited. And the, the dating, uh, available dating, is mainly relied on the information uh, in the colophons of texts as show. Uh, I will uh, tell you how, how was it. Uh, for example, uh, names of Mongolian and Uyghur rulers if we find the name of Bolohan, for example, in one text, I discovered uh, that uh, the name of Bolohan was uh, mentioned. We know uh, when uh, she was uh, uh, active in, in the UN, um, uh, UN period, then we can immediately, uh, what you say, decide the dating of the text. And sometimes they mention some names of some Uyghur rulers, then we just uh, need to, to check uh, the time uh, when they uh, were active, then we can decide the date uh, of the text. The names of uh, some uh, oh, well-known, actually, well-known historical persons. For example, if the name of Kiki, uh, one text mentions the name of Kiki, and he was active uh, um, in the second half of the 13th century. He was a very famous uh, poet, so we know uh, when the text was printed, and some historical place names, and uh, for example, sometimes uh, if you are fortunate, uh, we will find the dating uh, naturally in animal cycle plus Chinese calendar. Then we can calculate it, and then uh, uh, what you say precisely uh, decide when the text was printed. Uh, <coughs> Yes, this is one of the interesting texts we can uh, 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 date uh, so, so precisely. It's the colophon uh, to the to Avalokiteshvara text, uh, which is actually the translation of the Avalokiteshvara uh, chapter of the Sandharma Pundarika text. It's a very famous text in Chinese Buddhism, and we have a long, um, uh, what do you say, uh, long text, um, which was actually, uh, you, you know, reconstructed on the basis of so many fragments from different uh, collections, and you know, it was done by uh, by uh, by a lady uh, called Sharaki, and uh, she has uh, what you say, uh, the this text printed and distributed in one thousand copies in order to collect merits might be enough to secure his husband Yol Temur, Yu Ching, who was when, uh, sent uh, to Karachang for a great job, could safely return home and join his family. Um, th this is the fragment uh, which so precisely mentioned place names and the name of the person, uh, uh, historical person. Then we just went to check who was it. 
uh, who was he? Then we found this name, uh, Yol Temur Yu Cheng. Uh, the Chinese uh, is the Yuli Temur or Yu Yu Cheng uh, in the in the Chi uh, Yuan Dynasty history of the Yuan Dynasty Yuan Shi, and he was actually really sent uh, to Yunnan on the uh, fifth day of May, uh, one thousand three hundred. Uh, 29, uh, in order to s suppress uh, rebels in Yunnan. And, and the place name Karachang really uh, is exactly the old Uyghur name. Actually, the transcription of the Mongolian name uh, in Chinese, it, it has also the uh, transcription Karachang, and that's the name of Yunnan. And then we decide that it, the text was printed uh, one year later. Uh, Sharaki's husband went to Yunnan, and then we know it's, it cannot be the other year, 1330. Uh, 1, so he was sent uh, on this, at this time to Yunnan. So we are so lucky enough to date the text. But it's really very rare. Uh, among the, of the 1,500 printed texts, uh, uh, I, I think we have only these pieces. To, to be dated rather precisely. Uh, I provided the date of the texts here. I listed them. The earliest one is uh, from this time, and the latest one is from uh, this period. So these are all fragments, all datable fragments we have, according to the colophons. Then we discussed the problem with a scholar, who, a Chinese scholar, actually with some German uh, colleagues in uh, Rutgen Research Laboratory, and they told me that they can date every text uh, according to image uh, analysis. Then I said, how about the old Uyghur uh, block prints or printed texts? They said, yes, we can do it. Then I <laughs> provided the idea how, uh, what should be done. Then we started a project there, and we, worked on them uh, two years, between 2009 uh, to 2011, and we found that uh, you know, uh, certain letters or, uh, and phrases frequently occurring in some old Uyghur printed texts uh, with sure dating and printing places, um, we found that there existed an obvious correlation between the Hayat and the widest of letters in the printed texts and their printing time. Uh, the highest and widest of letters were higher and thicker in the early printings, and the letters turned shorter and thinner in the later period. So we took the piece uh, uh, of the text from, the, uh, from 1248, and we took the, the text from the uh, 14th century uh, through the comparison uh, of the same phrase and same, uh, what do you say, same words. And we, 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 we discovered that really uh, the, in early period they are written uh, thicker and uh, bigger, and later they became, uh, they, uh, they, they started writing them uh, thinner and, and what do you say, um, uh, and shorter. Um, that that's the. Yes, yeah, uh, you can. Uh, sorry, you can see here. Uh, you know, in the early period, you know, it was so thick. Then they became uh, um, so. Uh, what do you say? So short in late texts. For for example, uh, from the text exactly after one hundred year. Uh, they are uh, re really what you what you can see it if you see the original. They are really thin, uh, and in the early period, it, they were very thick, and that's the uh, correlation between the widest and the uh, Nahayat. And through that, we can we decided that uh, if we see a block print, uh, if the letter uh, is thick, and and what you say. Uh, uh, high, and we can decide it's, it might be from the uh, beginning of the 13th century. If it's too uh, short and, and what do you say, thin, perhaps they are from uh, the 14th century. So um, 
uh, that's the approximate dating of the texts. And that's the, uh, the another uh, presentation uh, of the same phenomena in this um, figure. Uh, meanwhile, we discovered that the texts with relatively high and thick letters had single marginal lines, and the texts with relatively short and thin letters usually had double marginal lines. Uh, that means early texts had single marginal lines, and late texts had uh, double marginal lines. It was actually, I got the idea from the Japanese scholar who worked very long time on um, uh, printed uh, Chinese text is uh, Chikusa, Professor Chikusa at Kyoto University. He has a very fundamental and important paper uh, which was published in Japanese on the Chinese printings. And he said perhaps the, the marginal lines uh, actually speaks for the dating of the text, but he did not mention any, uh, any uh, Chinese text. Um, uh, but that was the idea what I got from him, and it was really uh, in, in, the, in the course of investigation uh, we uh, discovered that it really not always, but uh, principally it goes for uh, all Uyghur texts. And I can show some pieces here. Unfortunately, it was uh, one kind of irony. I think I would say, if I show the the, uh, the photo here, uh, this is actually the text uh, uh, from one, uh, 1,248, the earliest datable uh, block printing with single marginal lines, actually with thick. You know, if you see it, you will see it's, it's very thin. But if you see the colophons uh, uh, of later period, uh, they are really uh, very thick, but this is very thin. Uh, but in the photo, you, can, you cannot see it. You cannot see it because photo is too small. It's a very big fragment. Um, uh, in the original, you can see it very clearly. And this is from the later period, you know. Uh, unfortunately, uh, here, this fragment is 100 years later than the, the first one, previous one. Uh, it has marginal, uh, two double marginal lines. Uh, and the, the letters are relatively thin, but because it's very small, it looks like that it's uh, thick and the other one is thin. That's the opposite. I'm sorry for giving that false information, false impression. And then we, uh, we also made investigation on the manner of uh, what you say, way uh, of textus, uh, the uh, way of printing of textus. Because um, at that time, Yasun Ashuri and, and Xi Jinbo uh, claimed that uh, the majority of uh, text of Uyghur, old Uyghur printed texts are actually the uh, printings by means of uh, movable uh, letters. Then we tried to, to uh, make some investigation uh, on this uh, uh, on this matter, and you know. Uh, as I have told um, uh, a little uh, earlier, uh, we have uh, these uh, two, three kinds of situations. And many scholars, for example, Peter Zima and, and others, they think all Uyghurs, all Uyghur printings are only woodblock prints. There are no uh, printings uh, uh, which was printed uh, by means of uh, what do you say, the uh, movable letters. And the, the Japanese scholar Kudara Kogi says, with the exception of the, of the fragment, uh, one fragment uh, uh, kept in Fuji Yurinkan Museum in Kyoto, others are, are, are woodblock prints. Uh, he makes um, one exception. And uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Yasun Ashuri and Shi Jinbo, and they claim that 50-50. Uh, perhaps uh, the, the texts uh, printed by means of movable letters are more than woodblock prints. They make the opposite uh, uh, argument. So uh, it was very important to know what happened actually for Uyghurs. Uh, we, we tried to check this, this point. And really, uh, you know, we have 
real texts which, which can uh, be proved that uh, the printed version is actually based on the, what you say, the, the, the manuscripts. This is the manuscript version of the Arya Apiramita Yurjinana Nama Sutra, and this is the printed version. Uh, you know, the wording and line orders, everything are identical. You cannot make any, uh, what you say, differentiation between them. So that means that uh, block prints actually are based on the manuscript, perhaps. They just uh, uh, wrote it down in this, uh, in this way and, and cut it down and, and print it. So um, that's the, uh, the majority of uh, old, Uyghur, would, uh, old Uyghur printings. They are really uh, wood block prints. And then we have um, these kind of things. Uh, we have nearly 1,000 pieces at Musée Gemi, and uh, about, uh, I think now, more than 40 pieces, um, uh, such kind of so-called movable, um, uh, uh, what do you say, wood letters, uh, which was regarded to, to, uh, to uh, use to, to print old uh, Turkic, uh, old Uyghur uh, printings, texts. And if you see them, on this one, you will find a phrase. And here, the, what you say, part of a, what you say, a, a letter, not a, in, uh, the entire, uh, what you say, entire one letter, some, some parts of it. And sometimes only one letter, sometimes two letters together, and so on. That's the situation of, um, uh, of, or, or so, of the so-called uh, movable letters. And my teacher, Professor Shogaito, says uh, they are not uh, movable letters. Uh, they just um, cut down from block, wood block prints. And other hand, why should they, what you say, make such uh, things? Just uh, the half of the of one letter, and it's not necessary to make uh, what you say, the one letter uh, cut uh, as as two uh, uh, two units. And you, you, you need to, what do you say, uh, uh, make one, one piece of block um, uh, for one letter. It's not necessary to make, uh, make uh, what do you say, specific uh, piece of uh, movable letter uh, for the different parts of the same letter. And he argues that the the size of the, uh, move, so the so-called mobile letters are different. You cannot print uh, with them the text and, and the same line. Uh, one is, for example, uh, it's 30 centimeters uh, wide, and other one is 20. You, you have no way to put them together and print a text. And then he rejects uh, uh, this, this opinion. But we look at this. And Yasun Ashri and, and Xi Jinbo prints out uh, such kind of things, you know, with such a big distance here, uh, with big space. And this is the first letter, and this is the second. They said we can print uh, the text in this way, and as the old Uyghurs did. Actually, we cannot find any printings uh, like that, with such a huge space between two words. Uh, uh, it's not the case at all. Then we started our investigation from the examination of the, uh, the Tangut letters. You know, uh, because the Tangut letter, letter, uh, letter printings are, are recognized. Um, uh, scholars have no uh, doubt about the existence of uh, or, the, or the use of uh, letter uh, printing by, by Tanguts. But we discovered that, oh, sorry, I have, it's too close. Uh, we, we just uh, checked the same uh, characters on the same page and different pages. We found that uh, the shape of the same letter on the same page are different. Uh, but the shape of uh, the same letter on, on different pages are similar. Uh, that means that the tanguts really use the same letter uh, to print the, 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 the same thing on the next page or different pages. 
Uh, on the same page, they had no way because you can use it under, uh, once only, and they have to produce this uh, other one. So that's the uh, main future of the Tangut uh, uh, letters, uh, what you say, movable uh, printings. Uh, but if you look at the, uh, uh, yes, this is the, the thing which was discovered uh, in this famous book, Meng Shi Bi Tan. That's the famous uh, book on the history of uh, what you say, uh, printing, uh, published by Shen Kuo uh, in the 11th century. I, only some, some words and I, I will stop. And these are the case of Uyghur printings. If you look at them, uh, it's not, it, we have taken them from uh, the same text and you, you will find that some words, for example here, the all means al ku, and acres, we have the several uh, appearance of the same, um, same word in different uh, the printings, and all are the same. And the word for Bodhisattva and Buddha, um, for example, Burhan, called in, in old Turkic, are completely same. Lengths and widths are completely same on the different pages of the text. If they occur at the same page, they are the same. So you cannot, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's different from the case we see uh, and, in the and, and Tangut printings. So we figured, uh, we analyzed and, uh, this phenomenon and we came to the conclusion that Uyghurs uh, actually had some uh, somewhat some stamps uh, for very frequent words and some, uh, what do you say, uh, holy words perhaps, uh, Buddha and Bodhisattva and, and, and so on. They just printed down, uh, the, the, uh, what you say, stamped down when they came to that word, I uh, had to write it again. And then, not on the uh, block, but on the paper. Then, uh, what you say, they produced the text and then print it, cut it down and to print the block, to produce the block prints. That's why we, uh, perhaps that's why we find uh, totally uh, same size of uh, letters on the different pages uh, of the same text, same text. Uh, because you know, if the same person writes the same word at different places, you have no way to write down, uh, write them in the same size, same length, same width. It's it's difficult. Uh, that's what we we thought. Uh, perhaps the so-called uh, some parts, at least the uh, so-called uh, what you say, mobile letters we see in Kimi Muzi Kimi and in Donghuang actually used to, 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 uh, for this purpose. That was our um, our uh, what you say conclusion. Um, I, I would not. Uh, I had I prepared a lot of things. Uh, but I stop here. Uh, I think Paul is uh, uh, showing me. No, uh, yes, uh, yes. There's plenty of time for further discussion. We're moving over to the seminar so we can uh, pick up where, where you'd like then. Uh, but I believe uh, there is time for a couple of questions. So. I'll start, if I might. Um, could you give us some context as to when uh, black printing was taken up in the Uyghur worlds, or among other khanates? What's the what's the kind of uh, chronological situation? I'm just gonna repeat the question so that we can get it. So, when is black printing taken up? Yes. In the Uyghur uh, tradition. Um, you know. The old texts, if you look at the period uh, where uh, when they pro uh, have been produced, are the the period um, uh, when the Mon Mongolians came into came to the power um, from the 13th century. Uh, uh, exactly, the earliest datable text is from uh, 1248. Uh, so uh, from that time until the end of the 14th century, uh, uh, from the, the first half uh, of the 13th century to the end of the 14th century, uh, that's, that means that 
they came to existence uh, during the Mongolian period. Uh, I think that together with uh, Mongolian block prints, as well as Tibetan block prints, um, you know, the, a lot of texts have been, and in Mongolian, also in Tibetan, have been translated by Uyghurs. Uh, that's why uh, at least I can say it uh, uh, with confidence that uh, that's why the basic Buddhist terminology in Mongolian language uh, are all Turkic. Uh, you know, they help them to, to have the alphabet and I think uh, they help them to develop their termin Buddhist terminology and I think it was supported by the, uh, the Mongolian rulers at, the t at that time. And, I think uh, that's the uh, the context. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about that more in the seminar because I was also curious. I know we have a lot of early Manichaean texts. There are lots of Christian old Turkic texts. So why is it only Buddhist texts that are block printed? Uh, but we can we can use that as a teaser. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I saw you just uh, you had a slide you were going to maybe have talked about it, but I was wondering why in these texts that are translated to Uyghur. Why are they always Chinese, so like numbering? And, I mean, why, why did they include the Chinese? Why couldn't have done it all in Uruguay? Um That's a good question. Actually, I, I wanted to come back to this problem, to this question, but I was stopped and I had to stop because, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, two different things. The first, um, why they use Chinese? Because, you know, the masters who cut the text very Chinese. They do not know the Uyghur. They do not know Uyghur. They have to recognize the, what, the, what, which text is it, and, and what comes first and what follows after that. So that's the point. They, they use Chinese characters as pagination or as title. Uh, but the situation is different. If uh, in, in the, the printings I have shown uh, uh, at the end uh, uh, of uh, my uh, description of, of the corpus, uh, there are two texts, you know, as part uh, of, the, of the Uyghur text. I think they are bilingual texts. It's not, uh, the purpose is different. The Uyghurs simply wanted to, uh, what do you say, uh, identify uh, the text with the Chinese. Uh, it's just like, the, what do you say, one kind of, um, uh, the, uh, uh, what do you say, the translations of Quran, early Quran, uh, both in Arabic, then the Turkish, then uh, with Turkish together. Because the terms uh, they used to translate uh, the Arabic Quran uh, text uh, was newly done, uh, is not understood uh, by normal people, uh, even by monks. Uh, you know, it's newly done and uh, artificially you have no way to understand without reference to the, the source text. So that's why they have to provide the, the original one. Uh, I think um, that's the case of many Agama, Agama texts, but we do not have Agama uh, texts as printings, but as uh, manuscripts. They provide the translation, then follow with the Chinese original, then you can understand it. Other hand, you have no way to understand it. And because the terms are so different in different texts, for the same thing, uh, I will use this um, uh, this term, and the other person use uh, another term, uh, another term. So, so you have no uh, way to, to come together. I think that's the, the that's that's perhaps the, perhaps one of the reasons they, they use uh, that method. You did mention that they were scrolls and folded books. Is there one format that was more common? Um, actually, uh, frankly, uh, saying, I would say, mm, if I say 100%, it's not correct. 99% yeah. of texts are folded books. Even they are single pieces, they originate from folded books, with the exception calendars. Uh, so, yes, unfortunately, that's the situation of uh, uh, block uh, printed texts in old Uyghur. How does that relate to non-printed? So did they just settle on that format and then just copy it and shift it to printed, but there were many other earlier formats, or was that the case? 
before the, the adoption of printing. Did you have did you have many different formats before printing, and then when uh, printing was adopted, they settled on just the single format? Uh, we had some folded books in uh, as manuscript uh, from the early period. Uh, but the folded books um, became uh, what you say the main uh, form of, of, of printed textes. Uh, but uh, we had uh, manuscripts in different form, as book, as scroll, and folded books, and, and so on. So it's really different. And format is also very different. High format, a small format, and small booklets just to, to put the pocket books, for, exa for example, in a very small size. Uh, the very famous and uh, uh, very lovely one, I think, uh, is the Uyghur translation of the Prajna uh, Pramita Khartaya Sutra. It's so um, uh, cute in a very small form. Uh, I have edited it in my uh, book, which was published 2010, uh, the, that, that, that text. It's really very small as a small book. Uh, just, I, I would call it pocket book. Thank you again. Uh, this is the first, uh, my first lecture which was given in, in an English speaking country. Uh, I was so nervous. <laughs> I'm sorry for, for forcing you to hear such a, uh, what you say. Uh, not standard and, and broken English. I'm sorry for that.